everyone. What we're gonna start talking about this semester is Python. So I am teaching two new courses this semester. One of them is Sentiment Analytics, but mostly it's a natural language processing course using Python, the natural language toolkit, and the natural language toolkit book. So we're going to uh, start adding Python videos to the channel. And then the other course, which you'll get videos for, will be a human language analysis course using R. So we're kind of taking this from two directions where a student who takes both of these courses would be real rounded in corpus linguistics um, from either a Python or R perspective. But um, if you did both, you would have a, uh, the ability to analyze language in multiple ways. Now, what I want to do to install Python, which is what this video is about, is to use the Anaconda distribution. And so there are many good reasons why we'd want to use this over installing Python and then installing um, a, pa a, you know, a development environment for Python and then installing NLTK. Like, instead, we'll just do it as one big giant program. So I previously downloaded this um, for Windows and Mac. It works the same on both. And you just hit download. You would go to open that file and you click through all the options. Um, the first time I recorded this, there was no sound. So I've already clicked through all the options. Uh, but at one point you'll want to, you'll get asked if you want to install VS Code for Microsoft. That's up to you. I went ahead and added it to my system because I wasn't sure. And so I am not a Python person yet. I can Python, but I'm not very good. So we'll all learn um, how to do some of this stuff together. So after you've gotten this installed, um, what you'd want to do is go to applications on a Mac or programs on Windows and open the navigator. Now, when we installed this, it also installed several other components to, for us, um, such as Spider and Jupyter. If you're on a Mac, you don't see those as separate programs. You have to open them through Anaconda. And I think I don't see them myself anyway. Uh, if you're on Windows, they kind of install as separate programs, but you'll want to open the, the navigator, which I have open here. So when you are first open this, it'll ask you if you want to send them um, data analytics, being in data analytics, sure, why not? Uh, mainly for crash and bug sorts of things. But the reason that I suggest using Anaconda um, is because it comes, it like in pre-installs a lot of things that a data scientist might use, such as a Jupyter notebook, which to me is one of the ways that I hear people writing uh, manuscripts or reproducible documents with Python. I've been using R Markdown. Now R Studio actually comes with this as well. Um, which is interesting since R is not really meant to be a Python, um, a Python editor, but it does actually allow you to, to do Python in it. Um, but I would say that the environments for uh, Python are probably better than using an R environment and trying to make it work for Python. Um, but we'll see as we go. Uh, Spider here is one of the bigger ones that I've um, heard people use who are data science people. Okay. So if we wanted to use Spider, we would click launch. Okay. And then here's um, what Spider looks like. So if you're familiar with RStudio and you're kind of an R person, um, this will hopefully be a little bit familiar as well. We've got our coding environment where we'll save scripts as .py. We've got our uh, console where all the magic and stuff happens down here at the bottom. And then we have a variable explorer, much like the environment window, file explorer, help. Pictures will also pop up as a separate window. And so it kind of has that familiar feel to our studio. Um, and then as we go, we'll learn what all these buttons do and how to actually like make things run. Um, and so I just wanted to show you kind of like what we're going to be using. A, uh, for the course and for as we go through Python. I'm gonna close Spider here. The other cool thing that happens when you use Anaconda is not only has it installed Python for you, but it's actually installed a bunch of packages for you as well. And so if I click on installed up here, it'll show me all the different um, packages that I have installed. And it also will allow me to update them. 
So click down the arrow here, click updatable, and these are the packages that you'd want to update if you need to. I've already updated Spider, which was the first thing it asked me to do, and NumPy, but I should check, make sure NLTK doesn't need one. Um, and then like other things I might use, like, oh, here's one that we will definitely use, which is matplotlib. To update a package, you click on it, click mark for update. When you're done picking the packages you want to update, you click apply. You'll get one of these windows here that is um, the pa it's checking the package for dependencies. And so it's going to update other things that are needed with that package. So this, if you pick a bunch of packages, might take quite some time. I've only picked one, so hopefully it won't take too long here. Okay, so I lied to you guys, it took flipping forever. <laughs> so I'm pausing the video, now we're back. Um, now I will say that you can uh, update packages through uh, terminal or command prompts if you're on Windows machine. I'm gonna try to keep everything here in the Anaconda Navigator, um, not because I don't wanna teach you terminal code, but because sometimes it's just a little easier when we're introducing lots of new things to kind of keep it all in the same place. Um, but I will tell you if you're more, if you're a Python person, you can um, update all these packages through the um, sort of command prompt script that might run a little bit faster than this just did. But, you know, I answered some emails and now to um, update those, what we see is that it also requires us to update this other package. So we'd click apply. And then down here on the bottom, it will work on uh, updating those packages for us. The other reason that I really, I really just, I really like this so far, cause I, like I said, not a Python person, um, we'll be learning together is that, that it's integrated together with a learning community. And so here it's got options and documentation for Python. How do I learn Python? How do I work with pandas, which is sort of the data frame um, options for Python, NumPy, which is for scientific computing, uh, matplotlib, which we were updating, which is for pictures, which is sort of our ggplot alternative. And so it, can, it has all of this um, stuff built in here that you can watch or click on and open. Um, it's got my favorite option for Stack Overflow in the Windows version. Interesting. Oh, that's under community, sorry. So the other thing it has is the different communities that are devoted to um, learning coding. And so here's Stack Overflow, um, which is a great place when you get stuck. <laughs> and so um, you can, Look here to see what are some of the events and forums that go on for Python people. Um, and so all that together, really it installs Python, it installs an editor for us, and it installs some of the packages we're gonna use, such as NLTK. And instead of installing all of these things separately and differently, I can do it all together in one place. So that's what you need to get started this semester, is to get Python 3.7 with the Anaconda distribution um, downloaded so that we can get started on learning corpus linguistics.